Hunter x Hunter episode 89, Compassion X and X Strength. And he's got two big problems with his power. Two serious flaws. One of them is that rock, scissors, paper relies on people waiting for the attack to finish. Ja Junkin, great name. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Yes. Go with it. Ja Junkin is a great name. No one can convince me otherwise. Uh, yeah, I'm with Knuckle. <laughs> if we're here now, it's Ja Junkin. I love it. Yes, clearly. Why does everyone wait until he finishes this? Finishes it. Everyone's just kind of stunned by the audacity of it. Are we fighting or we're learning? I guess, yeah, we're fighting and learning. Fighting and learning, again. So fast. <laughs> Fair. I guess that's why they're not double teaming. It's like the hardest they can make this test. That's not good. That's terrible. This is not looking great. This is not great. How are we going to beat the ants like this? Clearly, I mean, there's no way this battle was going to be anything other than a positive, heartwarming experience, even though there's a lot of, like, punching going in the face. And I'm going to use that against them. Wow, he just got punted. I don't think so. Oh, that's how he meant it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. There's something about this I don't like. Oh, actually, did he just get him? Well, he did a rock, scissor, paper cancel. Jajan can cancel. When you're trying to land that falcon punch. Lure him in. We're in fighting game territory now. Or baseball, I guess. Like these cute chibi, chibi characters, chibi gon. There's a lot going on here. There is a weird thing in competition sometimes where there's this sort of arms race in strategy, where one strategy starts to become dominant and then there's a reaction to that strategy and a counter to it which becomes dominant, etc, etc. And so you get to this really high level of play where the current strategy between the two teams has a lot underneath it. There's a lot of nuance to it because it was built in layers over time. Weirdly, what that sometimes means is that amateurs coming in have an edge because things that worked a long time ago have been forgotten because of that long series of cancellation. My favorite example, and I may be misremembering the details, was a father who became the coach of his daughter's basketball team at school. And he had the idea rather to focus on the things people usually focus on, they would just do a full court defensive press every time, all the time. And they ended up winning the state championships or something like that. That said, I mean, that wasn't that impressive. Go and faked him out and then swept his leg. Though maybe there will be greater applications of that in the future. He needs another big move, not just Judge Ankin. Finally, there's something that rubbed me a little bit the wrong way about Go and saying, you should be fighting to kill. Well, on some level, I get it and respect it. This is a, a serious thing and you want to give your opponent the maximum respect. I think that is more applicable when you're more evenly matched and the person is using that as an excuse to not fully square up so that they avoid the true emotional pain of loss. Like they can always claim, well, I didn't try my hardest, etc. In a situation where one person is like clearly dominant and clearly winning or like already has one in a key sense, it's kind of unfair to be like, kill me, you know? But then again, I guess it was just a mental ploy. I don't know. Yeah, scrambling to stop it or get out of the way. Yeah, 
I'm not fully convinced, to be honest. I'm not fully convinced because, like, I've played Captain Falcon. <laughs> People just learn how to avoid Falcon Punch. Though I can't remember if it was cancelable. I mean, I can see the advantages. I do see it. He needs to have something in its place, though. Like, if he cancels and does something else. Gon has always learned best by doing in the moment. <laughs> I like I love how, I love the dedication to Jajankin. Jajankin or nothing. So fast. Right, right. He's tired. He's tired. Maybe one more Jajankin in us. I get the feeling that even through all this and through all Gon's taunting and challenging, Knuckle is taking it easy on him. That's kind of what I'm saying. Yeah. Already? It's right out in the open like this, huh? What's he got planned? No, he's got a plan. He's so far away, though. If you're Knuckle, can't you just, like, take 8,000 steps back? There are no ring outs. Nako just can stand here. Can you do like a dash forward, Jajunkin? Oh, he's got a projectile. I'll bet he's going to moving behind it or something. This is a decoy. Watch going to be like in it or something. Oh no. Nako, you fell for it. You could just dodge it, oh well. There he is. Oh, he landed it! <laughs> Gon is the first to fall, anyway. Oh no. That was that was noble. He put up an effort. He, he, you know, he was... He, did, he was... Uh, well, he landed a hit. Good night. I know this is not a victory. I know this is not great. It doesn't speak well for the ant thing, the ultimate goal. But just as an interaction between Gon and Knuckle, I feel this went so well. They already bonded. They're already going to be a thing. Gon didn't win, it seems. But it's just impossible for Knuckle not to respect what just went down. I don't know if Gon would feel the same way, but I feel that way about Gon. You know, it's that rocky thing of I went the distance. You don't have to be victorious every time to have a clear win, if that makes sense. So much of the perception of that is going to come down to your own expectations. What your narrative is for the event and what you fear and what you want to prove to yourself. Clue carrying going again. More training. That fate, though. Ha <laughs> Shu's busy defeating himself. I don't believe anything you say. <laughs> I'm with Kalua once again. Nope. He, in fact, was not. That I get, yeah. You don't want pity in your victory. Look who slinks out of the shadows. Yeah, they do not get along. <laughs> Sees right through him. Good. <laughs> Bisky so seldom uses her powers for restoration, even though it's so vital. What? Oh, okay. It is a love triangle. Oh, okay. That is scary. That is. This is the. This is almost scarier than the ants. <laughs> oh, okay. Bisky wrecked him. So smackdown. Thanks, Zubisky. <laughs> it's funny to think about Bisky as a gorilla, but I guess once you fight her... Oh, she's, it's dark. What am I looking at? Oh, it's Bisky. It's, it's terrifying, especially the underwear.
yeah, that's what they were saying in that jail. That was his brother was his main teacher. Basically, it's always so full of gems. Oh no, why does everyone do this to Kalua? Why does everyone beat up on him like this? He's already worried about this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh man, oh, again, so many mixed feelings. Firstly, what I've settled on in, in the evaluation of Kalua leaving with Gon, fleeing Never P2, is what I said about how the body retreats, the spirit does not. That's sort of the optimal, right? And that makes it so that you don't have to be stupid. You don't have to fight to die in every situation. You do want to bring in your, your rational faculties in problem solving. Sometimes it is good to step back and reevaluate. That said, well, that's the highest version. Bisky and others have a point about Kalua. It's not purely strategic. It's also emotional. It's very fearful. There is a lack of faith and there is a way that it weakens him. Because if you're thinking about the, the escape door behind you in a difficult situation, you're sort of one foot in, one foot foot out and sometimes like a victory or success requires being all in. It goes back to something Sun Tzu said in The Art of War about how if you really want to defeat an enemy, while you would think you want to trap them and annihilate them with overwhelming force, the best way to defeat them is to, yes, overwhelm them with force, but leave them an avenue of escape so that they're, they have that possibility ever present in their minds and so they're not fighting with full strength. Whereas if you cornered them, they literally have no choice but to fight to the death and they're going to give it their absolute all. Their mental resources are 100% devoted to just a battle in front of them. I can see how the problem is extra pronounced for Kalua, given his relationship with Gon, who will go all out, and Kalua's destiny and presence, the events of his life very, very closely tied to Gon. I mean, this is also the concept behind, like, putting your feet to the fire, where you really want to accomplish things, leave yourself no other choice, which is a risky strategy, and I, you know, I typically don't like it, but there's something to it. Related to this, sometimes the worst thing that can happen to your development is being comfortable. Being at a level that's somewhat satisfactory might be worse off for you long term. If your life was slightly less satisfactory, you might work harder and the outcome would be to go farther and do greater things. That's always a challenge of development, knowing when to draw that line and, and stop or when to sacrifice what you are for what you could be. I think the trick for Kalua, and maybe this is Bisky's point, it's not that retreat is terrible or that not fighting is the wrong choice always. It's more like not letting yourself be defeated by a perceived challenge, not defeating yourself. About Bisky being so direct and telling him, I have no doubt you're going to leave going behind to die. Split on that because I feel so bad for Kalua, man. He just keeps hearing this and it's also his biggest fear. And since the problem already is his own ruminations and fear, for some people, blowing that idea up even more might lead to more paralysis as opposed to less. It will only do some good and I think this is probably what Bisky's going for because she believes in Kalua. If he like is so deeply worried and concerned about that and hurt by that, that he's like enough is enough and it stops here. And if Bisky's the teacher that I think she is, the next step is now walking him through undoing that long learned long-lived habit step by step. That's very interesting. This whole thing is very interesting. Oh, that... Wow, that's hit surprisingly hard. Those are stakes right there. Because Gon, yeah, Gon will not leave. Gon will not run, ever. He will, like, he will take on the challenges even when that A scale, the highest point of the A scale, doesn't touch the D scale. Though, just using Bisky's model, it really is never that simple. There's always a chance of victory in anything. Because, like, there is no A, you know? You just are what you are, and there's just the infinite options. A can become B in the middle of the fight. It's a lot to carry on your shoulders. Bisky just, <laughs> true as ever. Have a great time, kids. Okay, there, yeah, there's the real Bisky. A smothering love, you say, from the parents who poisoned him and <laughs> electrocuted him and almost killed him and threatened to kill his friends, etc. They really did a number on him, for sure. The silver lining is that Kalua obviously has been trying to break those bonds himself. It's just, I think a lot of it is the unseen, unseen, or unknown, unknown. Oh, hi. <laughs> As if she couldn't just crush Palm. I mean, she she left everything, or she left nothing on the table. I don't think she has anything to really feel bad about. She treated them as adults and gave them the full adult student treatment with love. Her actions also show a high level of respect for them. Got a two on two. 
that was a very interesting turn for Kaluat that I didn't expect in this episode. It adds a weight to the fight. But in some ways, it's even more compelling than can we beat the ants? Because it's like, can you beat yourself? Just trying to draw parallels. The ants work as a, you know, a big, seemingly impossible, very dangerous, even if it's emotional danger, task. Are you up for it? Can you do what it takes to build yourself up to that point? Are you adequately understanding the challenge? Are you just rushing off to your own demise? Do you have the courage to face that? Can you do what you want to do? With Kalua, it's something like, can you be who you want to be? Can you beat your own personal demons? Are you willing to look internally and go back to all of the, the beliefs that you've carried with you as a child that until now have been keeping you safe and have been a cornerstone of your identity. Can you shed those? Can you crawl out of your, your protective shell to be this raw, soft, vulnerable, fleshy creature while you build a new one, build a new home? Can you admit your own weaknesses? Can you face your own fears? That to me is immediately resonant. It hurts when someone you respect tells you that you're, you're not good enough or that you're a danger to yourself, or that they foresee that you'll never get what you want. You know, someone who, who you really respect, someone who you think or know loves you, right? So you know their words are not aimed at just taking you down a peg, but out of like actual concern because you're not good enough yet, you know? It's a lot to take in. And from there, there are two choices. You can flee, you can deny, distance yourself from the other person's words, or you can take action. You can get to work one step at a time in addressing those things. I also, I'm not a huge fan of like, believe in yourself and you can do anything. There's obviously a cyclical relationship between thoughts and actions, but I happen to think that thoughts are harder to directly force control over than actions. Thoughts you can influence to some degree. I think the way you influence your thoughts is not by like, directly wrenching control over them, but by becoming more aware of them and choosing what you do with them. Developing that lens on your own minds. You see what's coming up, but you, you draw a healthy distinction between what you're thinking and who you are and what you will do so that you're not dictated by this like instinctual reactionary emotional flow. That's sort of the default base level of, of existence so that you are then free to act in any way you see fit using all of your faculties instead of just your immediate instincts based on your deepest fears and insecurities, etc. And that comes with practicing looking at what you're thinking with a sort of zoomed out, more objective lens. A third party view on your own mind in a sense, not the similar from meditation or other similar practices. But actions, you just do it, you know? That's it, like there's something you gotta do, you do it. At the very least, just putting yourself in the situation and trying it and seeing what comes of it. And I think a lot of the time where that confidence comes from, where that believing in yourself comes from is building that for yourself through action. It's like, I went and I did it. I went the distance. I was afraid, but I worked my way through it. I showed up, I did my best. Oh, look at that, I actually have a victory here. I another victory there. Victories are accumulating. I am the kind of person who can set out to a challenge and achieve victory and get what I want. And I also know now from experience that even if I fail, that's not the end of the story. That's feedback. As long as my heart's in the right place, I get up, I continue doing it again. And I now have a track record of going through that process and achieving victory. That I think is so much more powerful than trying to be like, I believe in myself. I believe in myself. I believe in myself, etc. You really can't shoot your feelings if they're not authentic. You have to actually believe in yourself to believe in yourself. And I think the good thing about Kalua that Bisky recognizes is that he will put in the work and he will show up and he will take action.